Hey, it's Pascal from the Skits and Giggles podcast. Welcome to this bonus episode. Just a couple of days ago, Brass and I, we recorded a little wrap-up episode for the 2021 season, and we had this uh, fantastic idea to, you know, put together a little compilation of all the answers to our infamous closeout questions. So today, we put together a compilation of all the answers to the question that makes a great skit. Take it away, Bryson. Now, I want you to think real deep here. Maybe even close your eyes to conjure up a real deep <laughs> answer. It's very important. So, what makes a great skid? <laughs> I don't know if I want to go that deep. <laughs> I might move past biking. <laughs> okay, we'll keep it on the, we'll keep it on the I'm, biking I'm level. kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, kicking up loads of dirt and dust makes a good skid for me there you go like you know really really sending it for the trail <laughs> crew so to speak <laughs> there you go <laughs> hey, just making sure that they have a job <laughs> yeah i'm sure they're very happy about that but oh come on everyone's gonna agree it looks awesome you know, get I a load of loam flying in there. I, I tell you, I tell you what. I, I think it comes from snowboarding slightly. You know, riding powder, and and just getting getting in that turn and just send a load of snow just flying away. Everyone loves to see a picture of that, see a video of that, and everyone loves doing that. Go on, it's no difference. No different with biking. True. That's uh, very 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 true, <laughs> and I think we we all appreciate the. Uh, <laughs> The, the visual power <laughs> of a fantastic skid. Mm -hmm. Okay, Yeti, you're two for two, but here comes the clutch, the third question. Oh, oh, oh. All right, drum roll. In your personal opinion, now I want you to think real deep. Just get into your, your flow zone. How deep do you want it? So deep. <laughs> All the deep. All the deep. In okay. What makes a great skid? What makes a great skid? Uh, being a heavy guy, um, I think that, oh, no, it doesn't matter. The weight doesn't matter. But you know that if you would film a skidding in slow motion and the late the latest slow mo that I saw that pictured this was the bike check check of Jack Moore. When you see him skidding and you see the the rear wheel just flexing like check 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 check, and you get to that point of like on the edge of control, you feel your bike like also like sort of on the edge. I mean, for for me being so heavy, it's quite easy to get to like a real will to flex you don't need that much skill with my weight to make it do that uh but it it just feels awesome just to to feel like the bike just like this do this flexing vibration in the rear and just losing and being on the edge of losing and gaining traction again and especially feeling that you are sort of on control or at least believing you're in control of that Back in control. <laughs> yeah, that's. I think that feeling that makes is uh, makes a perfect skit for me. Ding. That's a, ding. <laughs> we have our third question, and it's it's not an easy one. It's it's actually uh, some might say it's the the hardest of the three. Um, others say it comes from the depths of hell. But I'll just ask it to you plain. Actually, you know what? No. So we've ridden together, and I do. I have noted your style. I've actually, I have you on some some um, some GoPro footage as well, and you're you're quite a, a calculated and a smooth rider, I would say, and you carry speed very well. Um, however, if you had to be really like the devil, how would you flatten a berm? How would you raise some earth, per se? What makes a great skid? Oh, wow, this is a really hard question. Um, well, on berms, I always prefer the inside line to like just really skid into oh. the berm. 
And so I'm very sorry to just sometimes destroy the sperm a little bit. <laughs> so if I'm very fast, but this doesn't happen that often. So uh, and on a bike ride from hell, I would just take the inside line, destroy the sperm, and just skip down this this trail. Yeah. <laughs> Sending it for the trail crew. All right. Well. As Pascal mentioned, we have three. And uh, aside from the magnificent porcupines, I want you to tell us how to make a great skid. <laughs> so, as you may know, I'm working for a tire company, so skids are really good for our business. And I'm really supporting everyone doing skids. But personally, I'm not really a fan of skids. Um, and think skidding is mostly like a yeah, posing move of beginners and or a bad breaking habit, Pascal. Um, ah, so controversial. Me, <laughs> controversial. <laughs> well, controversial. <laughs> no shots fired here. Um, yeah, but I would say uh, a really nice, really nice slide into a corner where you right fast into your corner and this is um yeah, that's that sweet sweet spray of roost you know but without insiding or cutting no breaks and no low pressure that's like uh, that's like art okay so you've just been granted your stees please tell us how would you you would use it to make a great skid <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all about the roost. This skid. It's all mm. about the roost and especially when it's a drift, it's about having like your bar turned and your wheel like kind of out, you know? It's like your front wheel's rolling, it's going forwards, and then your rear wheel's out skidding and drifting and there's like a bunch of roost. That's how. If you're gonna have triple the amount of trails. That means you're going to have to put in triple the amount of effort to make a perfect skid. What would it look like? Oh, man. Not sure how it should look like, but I'm pretty sure I know what it should sound like. And I want it to sound, I want it to have the sound of everyone who sees it just losing their shit, going crazy, loving it, freaking out. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's I think, how a, a perfect skid should, should sound. Truly. Okay, question three, the fabled uh, skid question. I'm going to deliver this into two parts, so you guys have to answer the individual questions that catered to you. Uh, Jan, outside of respecting other trail users and the nature, <laughs> what makes a great skid? Well, actually, if your skid leaves a nice, darker area behind your back wheel, and then in that right spot, actually like some milk is coming out of your mm. tire. <laughs> then you know you overdid it, but in a good way. So, yeah, just get that milk out of your tire and then everything's great. <laughs> Pressure police is going to be out in force. <laughs> That's for sure. We just want to get those comments, you know, comments or engagement. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And Dario, can you tell me um, a little bit about what kind of speed you need for a skid? Much speed. Quite a lot of speed, I would say. Speed is your friend, I said before. <laughs> so actually, I'm not good at skids at all because I think as an instructor, I have to like uh, coach people to lean their bike into the turn way too often. And so I can't do it else than that. Um, but I'm learning it because uh, my flatmate is pretty good at it. And... Uh, at least he can teach me there now. But uh, speed is your friend. So imagine yourself in the, uh, in the grandstands and everywhere around you, everybody's cheering, everyone's raw. We're going to make this happen. You're expecting this gladiator to come out and he's going to pull the most perfect skid. Please describe what you see. Uh, I can't tell you what it technically needs for the most perfect skid. I, do, I just know that like what it 
means to have pulled off such a skid is when not just yourself or not just the rider is smiling, but everybody around, you know, can feel that buzz. And I mean, that's what constantly happens, right? When we do these things, I think that is the, like, then that's proof that you, that you did the perfect skid. I'm feeling that for sure. (laughs) Yeah. There you go. Skits and giggles. (laughs) Question three. Uh, you're in Innsbruck, Crankworks. You're about to drop in. You know that if you incorporate a skid into your run, you will podium at least, probably take the crown. How do you incorporate that skid into your run? That's a tough one because you need to carry a lot of speed on that course. Um, I mean, if I would skid the last finishing berm, that would be kind of lame, you know? There's the drop, then the dirt to dirt, you know? And then I would... Jump, I don't know if you saw my post like a week ago, when I jumped and the side of the landing, I slide with my back tire. So I would send the big booter, which is big, transfer it a bit, try to skid it on the edge of the right side of the landing. And then try to not crash. And yeah, I mean, there would be a straight jump to some skidding into the landing, on the ed- like on the side of the landing, you know. Not the landing part, just the side of the part, and try to skid it there. And yeah, if a podium, I'll try it for sure. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna see <laughs> so that, that would be on a cool the, uh, one. Because like oh, in the, onto the whale tail, you know, super grippy. And if I'm too slow out of the rail, whale tail, I really get hurt in between the hips and <laughs> no speed. So yeah. I think we can see that one on the, uh, the Red Bull uh, highlights. For sure. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, if for I would, the next years. <laughs> if I would send that, I would get completely viral. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, speaking of skids, obviously our pièce de résistance, the third of our closing question, in your personal opinion, in your heart of hearts, deep down there, tell me, please, what makes a great skid? You know, Pascal, I, I really didn't want to tell anybody this but what makes a great skid is a secret skid so silent but deadly so if no one knows you did it isn't it magic boom number three okay so let's put yourself uh in the situation you're you're gonna shrink yourself down to the size of Somewhere between a grain of sand and an ant. Yeah. And you are looking up at the berm and you see some trail riders coming down, some some steezy jeezies, and they're just like slicing the trail up. From your perspective and your opinion, what makes a great skid? What makes a great skid? A great skid is one where you're like completely out of control and your both wheels are locked up and the gravel's going everywhere or whatever it is you're riding, and then you just let off at the last minute and just like, wow, in the turn. The skid and that fear on your buddy's face, and you can just feel it from your gut. You're like, oh, my God, and then you just make it and you just lose lose your beans. Like you said, the tin of beans explodes, and you're just like, oh, my God, you survived. That is the skid that just fires me up and makes you want to do one. So if we're, if we're we're having bikes without cables, without hoses, how are we how are we braking? Yeah, how are we creating our? It's going our... to kind of be the uh, the critical issue there. I think the the other the other uh, components have already been uh, dealt with. Well, I think the, you know the the psychology. You know, I've seen demonstrations within the, the car industry um, where you, you you are, I think they call it driving by wire. You know, there, there is no direct link between your pedal um, under your foot and the brakes. And so I think from a psychology perspective in, in mountain biking and any cy- um, um, cycling, I think you, you have to see a cable going into the, the, in, into the brake just from a confidence perspective. But yeah, I've seen examples of, 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 of wireless braking, but I, I just don't think people's <laughs> minds would take it. Okay, let's go with the wireless braking. And uh... we could all just go fixed gear. 
So there are some se- several solutions to control the wheel speed, uh, which is very key in order to create a great skid. So maybe you can describe using your electronic fly-by-wire, ride-by-wire, how are we creating a great skid? Well, I, I think, you know, that there's nothing um, in, in it that's uh, uh, widely different than what we'd, uh, we'd, we'd have now. We'd just simply have a, uh, a brake lever that, that was electronic, um, maybe a Bluetooth-type uh, uh, approach. Um, it would grab that disc brake beautifully, and you could skid as, as long as you wanted. Actually, I had a, a, a large hesitation asking this question um, as I was uh, perusing the uh, social media this morning. Uh, I saw a article from Pinkbike about how top six or so reason uh, things that that trail builders hate, and number one was that riders skid down the trails, but mostly really due to uh, in- inability to control the bike. But uh, <laughs> we're talking about some next level stuff here, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. It would be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, right. So number three, and normally we have our co-host read this one, but we have a very special guy reading this question today. It's co-co-host. Hi. <laughs> In your personal opinion, in your heart of hearts, what makes a great skid, Pascal? <laughs> well, um, I um, again, we've also had a couple of great answers on this one. Um, I personally think there is a, the right skid for the occasion. Um, I like a good moto skid on a gravel road where you just go like super fast (laughs) around a long flat turn put your foot out pull the rear brake and like big roost big skid long kind of um drifting um skid so that that is a really really nice one that that always gets me excited um i'm also i think one of the coolest things you can do and i know it's very very frowned upon is uh, a a very very well executed scandy flick or free ride flick or whatever you want to call it. It's just one of the coolest things. You can tell me whatever you want. Um, and then what is uh, what is also a cool one? I think I agree with Greg Jolliffe There is like the you know you're you're approaching approaching a big a big turn at Mac Chicken. You pull the last second. You pull your brakes, both wheels skidding, just almost crashing. And then at the last second, you let go and bring it around and swap, get around the turn and just save it. And that's just such a cool feeling. I think that's uh, those would, those would be my top three skids. Since you've traveled a vast majority of the world uh, and ridden many many trails around as well. Um, if you could pick a perfect corner to create the perfect skid, how would it go? So I, and, I yeah. And where would it be? Um, okay. Um, it would be somewhere in Switzerland, um, especially since I like to ride in wet conditions. It um, should be a single track, a wet single track um, with a bit, little bit of wet dirt some wet roots and rocks it could be ticino um it's always good to slide and skid over rocks there so that would be my perfect skid to just balance your bike through a wet single track okay mud mud spraying rocks flying the whole deal yes not too (laughs) muddy though not yeah. too muddy. Just, just just the right amount. Yes. Nice. We like it. All hail the switchback queen. <laughs> switchback or not, tell us about the f- best favorite most skid. It's it's a lot on like what you expect and what you get, I think. Like when you expect you barely make it or you just gonna there's gonna be a little bit of skid and then there's like the it's usually then it's the ground which 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 is maybe a bit different and it just explodes way more than you thought <laughs> then that's that's the one 
that's the one. It's all about what you think you're going to get and what you're going to get out of it. So I can't really get it straight in my head. Um, I know you guys are writing today, and I can't decide whether I want to hear the opinion of the first person point of view or the third person point of view, but maybe you both want to take a shot at it. So Remy, tell me what makes Gianluca skid so good? <laughs> there, my opinion of Gianluca skids. Um, yeah. They're wild because he usually gets out of control. At least he did today. Um, and I think that's, for me, that's, uh, that's the best feeling I get um, when you almost lose the back wheel but then bring it back around. Um, so that's what makes, uh, makes the skid exciting for me. How accurate is all of this, Gianluca? Yeah, that's accurate. I, uh, today, I, yeah, I have the pleasure to ride with three really good riders and it, it was for me it was like um, like a little bit riding in paradise because all these lines and it was so playful and to see them and and yeah the last year I've, I've met so many people who are riding so sick for me and um, I can learn so much from them um, but the skit there I don't know how but the end position under uh, really, I think it was a big a rock, um, and where I for or where I missed my glasses, and I have to took the light of the iPhone that I can. Sorry for the product placement, but uh, it was an iPhone. <laughs> sorry for that. But um, uh, to to find my glasses, um, yeah, and all were cheering and all were looking for me. But yeah, that that was. I don't know. I like this this ride. The conditions were not the best, but the community and the experience. And for me, yeah, to ride with so good riders and so funny people, um, I make yeah this day a good day. And my skit, my skit was one for the books. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sounds like it. That was one big skit right into a cave. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And we were definitely also cheering a bit because he was still alive. Because when we, when we didn't see him anymore, uh, hidden, hidden underneath that rock in the cave, uh, yeah, we got a little bit frightened. But um, yeah, he made it out in one piece and happy days. Hey, Dominic. Uh, so maybe for less, the listeners who are not so familiar with dirt jumping, normally when your dirt jump bike, it doesn't have a front brake. Uh, so primarily the braking, the slowing down of the bicycle is going to happen with the rear wheel. This is the, the only wheel. Yeah, this is quite typical for a dirt jump bike to only have one brake in the, and it's on the rear wheel. So for you work to describe your best or the best skid on a dirt jump bike using only a rear brake, how would you do that? Yeah, go fast as you can and break in into the turn and skid in. <laughs> I never try one with a dirt bike, but... Could be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's, let, I have to test and uh, maybe I can tell you later how exactly. they work. <laughs> no, I think you have to, to go, go in and break yeah. and slide, slide in and... Foot out, flat like, out. Yeah, flat out. Both feet out. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to balance, yeah. only one break. Exactly. Over, over the berm and out. Yeah, <laughs> right on. <laughs> Do you think it would help with skids? With skids? If you had this perfect, if you have this perfect uh, suspension, it will help you. With skids it will help with sure. skids, or it would it would decrease the skid. No, it will help you if you want to skid. The suspension setup will set it up for you, and you do the perfect skid. Perfect epic skids. Yeah. What, what what would that look like in your mind? If you were to control your bike with your the perfect skid, yeah. getting full speed in a corner like a walk-up racer and kind of realize at the very last moment that you have to turn your bike around so both brakes full locked and getting to the berm almost like get popped over your bars but your rear wheel is just exploding the ground like 
everything is just flying around you. That's, that's a perfect skip for me. So taking the vein number one out for a ride. Um, you mentioned uh, a little bit of a hike a bike. So we're getting up to some rocky pass. Of course, uh, in Switzerland, you're going to encounter a lot of hikers. But uh, they're egging you on. They're telling you, hey, do a skid. Do a backflip. Okay, maybe not a backflip. Do a skid. How do you, how do you show off? I like those uh, Scandinavian flicks from the rally. Enough said. That's, that's my skid, I think. But it, it makes most fun on road bikes. And wet streets. And wet streets. And high speed. Uh... All right, full adrenaline, yeah. All right, on. So um, imagine I find myself on one of your trails. And you just want to show me a little bit how you sprinkle your pixie dust. Uh, I'm standing on a berm. And I'm going to watch you do a righteous skid. What, what was that going to look like? First of all, I have to say, disclaimer, standing on top of the berm is a dangerous place. <laughs> because I would try to move as fast as I can into the corner, brake as hard and late as possible, and let the brake just go in the moment before I crash and slide out. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I mean, I built berms and I don't like if, if stuff gets destroyed, but... If someone is a proper rider and know how to to uh, shroud into corners, man, it, it's a pleasure to watch this and uh, repair the berm for him. So that's what I would do. Try to, to shrub as crazy as possible and spray you with some glorious tire milk sealant. Nice. I can, I can see it. <laughs> I can feel it. I'm a heavy lady, so it's not that hard to shroud. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs>